Oh. Time to wake up. Mm. Mm. Just we're just calling in the energy, right? We got some music, we got, what's today? This is morning moon. But obviously something very classical, right? Something very classical. Hello, friends. Abo Alneo, I'm not going to share the live. It's not that kind of live. <laughs> if you have a question, though, I will answer it. We will do that. So what's happening? What's she gonna talk about? What's going on? Some of you are like probably think I'm about to start talking about papayas or something, right? So I know a lot of people just follow me probably for the food and now all I do is talk about Reiki and people are like, shoot, you know? <laughs> Won't she talk about raw food again? Nah, people, people have been great. People have been wonderful. We are here talking about um we're talking about what is this yeah <laughs> reiki reiki i'm reading your comments and it's distracting me so welcome aloha friends this is day 35 of the 40 that was enough 40 days of reiki 40 days of reiki we are on day 35 can you believe it? I can't believe it. Dana Port is asking a question. How is Reiki and tapping different? Just heard about tapping today. Well, I am not the best person to answer that question because I don't really know much about tapping other than um, I've been guided through it before. It's like this kind of thing, right? And you're like, this is good stuff. Now, um, so completely different thing. <laughs> Uh, than Reiki for sure. Reiki is a hands-on energy healing modality like this where you know a practitioner like myself is channeling and bringing in the Reiki energy to that area and the Reiki energy is conscious life force energy so it's going to go in let's say my hands here and you have a kidney infection reiki will go to your kidneys it's like we don't care about the bicep so it's a, a conscious energy that's being channeled with tapping i'm not really sure i think maybe you're hitting on certain um like points in the body that are very potent like pressure points or something something like that you are moving energy with that um, and just, yeah, to clarify, I know I'm like, Reiki's hands-on, like, it's also not, <laughs> it can be done at a distance, too. So that would be a huge difference from tapping. Um, tapping, you're probably going to have to be maybe tapping the physical body. With Reiki, um, all the sessions I do these days are actually at a distance. So it's like this, where we're on video and audio and... Um, I send Reiki that way and I get to sit back and observe it and have a good time and experience a bunch of healing in myself and then the recipient you know lays back close the eyes has a total relaxing healing amazing experience and receives the energy without me having to be there in the room or I mean like psychically I can be in the room sometimes I'm not psychically in the room it's like whatever's needed um, Reiki's in charge I'm just kind of I'm like the facilitator and the permission collector um, because Reiki respects free will so definitely different now I'm I'm seeing also with this question Reiki and tapping could go together really well too 
Um, so whenever you're, you know, doing the tapping, let's say, like, let's say I started using tapping, which maybe this is a sign I need to start doing. This. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Um, so I could activate the energy. I could, I could be using a specific symbol because I'm attuned to energy, to the Reiki energy. I could be like tapping in the power symbol right here or tapping in the mental emotional. Now that would be, that would be amazing. Like have that intention where I'm sending the mental emotional symbol. Because Reiki has different symbols. It's like the system of tools and techniques to be able to work with and actually harness the energy so that it's not just, oh, we're lost in airy fairy land. Um, yeah, Christy is saying that, yes, tried to go, all right, all right, I'll just read it out loud so it's not like annoying for people watching this on YouTube after the fact or anytime because the comments disappear after the live. So hello, Christy, beautiful. I didn't realize you were live right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> Welcome. I was just trying to watch yesterday's episode on YouTube. Beautiful. I tried to go to your link for the class on YouTube, but it takes you to the general pay hope site, not the link for your site. Uh-oh, that's a problem. Um, it should... So the the course listing is hosted on pay hope, okay? Um, so look on that and how it how it looks is it's like a flame and it says holy fire one and two I think you know what I got my computer right right here why don't I show you and get it pulled up so we can we can problem solve this real quick so I mean great segue right okay I'm teaching Reiki if y'all want to learn it from me um, it will be organized and amazing and that is happening in May online because once again, you don't have to be in person to receive a Reiki session. You don't have to be in person to receive the Reiki attunement, the placement that I'll be offering. So you will have the energy for yourself and others. Hopefully you'll share it. This is what it looks like on pay the pay the page. This is what the page looks like. You know what I'll do too, just to make sure you have it like super for real, um, is that I will I will DM it to you as soon as I get off this live, Christy, so that you have that link and you can get registered. Um, yeah, just straight away. But yeah, it's so exciting, friends. Yeah, so I'm teaching it online in May. It'll be level one and two, so it'll be appropriate. If you've never had Reiki before, you still don't even really know what it is, but like it's it's calling to you, you're interested in it, you're curious about it, then, you know, this is an opportunity to dive right in and it's totally appropriate for beginners. It's totally appropriate if you have absolutely no healing experience whatsoever, energy healing experience, you know. You don't have to have like had a Reiki session first or anything. I mean, that might help like interest you in it, but there's there's really no requirement other than like you're a human being and you have Wi-Fi connection and you have a sincere heart and mind that like wants to learn this like for whatever reason. Um, so that's happening online in May. It'll be live on the Zoom. And it'll include practice where you're actually, you know, I'll attune you, we'll do the placement, you will have the energy directly, and then there will be time for you to, you'll learn specifically how to give Reiki to yourself, some different ways, um, to, to then, you know, you'll get the basics, so then after that, you can freestyle it. You can start freestyling it, but you'll have the basics so that, you know, at first getting started, it's like, it's nice to have some routines, some protocols, some really concrete, you know, instructions and steps um, to follow. And then as you get more comfortable, you'll be like, oh yeah, we're just like doing a little Reiki mix, a little Reiki dance, and you'll find different ways that you enjoy working with the energy. So with Reiki 1, it's a weekend. On Saturday, it'll be Reiki 1. You'll learn how to do it all yourself on yourself in person on your body you will receive the energy 
Um, I will give you probably a symbol because my first teacher gave us a Reiki symbol in Reiki 1, um, and it was cool, so <laughs> I'll probably do that again. And um, in Reiki 2, you will actually learn and be empowered to give Reiki in person and online at a distance on the phone or even not you don't have to be on the phone to give Reiki someone to give Reiki to someone at a distance like it's really really cool I'll have to tell y'all about a healing I did that way where it's like completely hands-off completely like not even phone like nothing and it worked big time so yes you will learn how to give Reiki to another person in person touching as well as at a distance there are several different techniques to use to be able to do that you will be qualified you will receive a cert certificate through the international center for reiki training and you will be empowered if you so choose to you know professionally give reiki sessions online you know <laughs> or in person if you want or if you're like, I just want it for myself, then you'll know how to give yourself Reiki. And you'll also be able to give it to family members, friends, animals, you know, send it to the world, to like causes like world peace. Or if you're a vegan, maybe to the animals, the animals in the slaughterhouses, you know, to the people who are sick or hungry. You know, you can send Reiki to any of these causes. And that's like an ultra beautiful um, use for the energy and and you know it's like it's not like you'll be using your your limited energy and resources to really empower these causes um, you'll be tapping into infinite resources and you'll also receive healing yourself and so much more like I don't even want to tell you what you may or may not receive because like I don't want to give you ideas so that that limits it like what you can receive as you give it is is in is all also infinite I'm having trouble with my words that probably means um, I need to go ahead and do the invocation before I talk anymore but really really great questions I appreciate y'all like I said Christy I will send you the link I will recheck the links in my bio and on my YouTube videos to make sure those are the correct links to actually sign up and register for the training. It's like, why is no one signing up? Well, they can't do it. <laughs> no, people are signing up, but y'all know what I mean. That would be that would be funny, right? A little a little humorous, a little humorous um, problem. How long have I done Reiki? I did my first training in September of 2019 and that was my Reiki one and how my teacher taught it. She did Reiki one in one weekend, uh, Saturday, Sunday, like half day, I think maybe four hours each day. And then I did my Reiki two. She had us wait a weekend and then Reiki two was offered. And um, that was, yeah. So I think that was just later on in September of 2019. So I've had the energy since then, but y'all like Dana, as soon as I got it, I was like, whoa, like this is not new for me. <laughs> it's new only for Taylor because that's my name, everybody. I didn't introduce myself again, but my name's Taylor. I'm a holy fire Yusui Reiki master total Reiki enthusiast and advocate and yes I remembered in that training I was like okay this this Reiki this is Reiki one for Taylor the personality in 2019 like this lifetime but this is something that is in my DNA it's in my ancestry it's in my soul history really really deep I've been working with this for a long time long long time so and I think that's that can be um, kind of common with people too. Like a lot of us, um, we're, we're like soul f family that are coming back together. And then, you know, you take a training and a lot of these past life memories can often be unlocked. That's certainly been my experience and the experience of others that I know um, who've taken initial trainings and definitely 
people who have taken the more advanced trainings and actually gone on to teach Reiki as well. Um, it, it can be a real key <laughs> to unlocking those like Akashic records and memories and all, all kinds of information you, you might want to have access to. And, you know, respecting your belief systems and everything too. So if you're like past life, that's BS, you know more power to you like it's all good all beliefs are welcome Reiki's not going to make you believe a certain way it'll just help you clarify and directly experience your your beliefs whatever they are um it's it's pretty awesome that way so without further ado is there anything else i was supposed to say yes it's day 35 of the 40 days of reiki what's my intention here my intention is to educate inform inspire and intrigue you about reiki as a tool for healing in mind body soul and spirit as well as a tool for spiritual awakening and if you so choose if it so resonates like for myself it has become reiki can also be a spiritual path that is pretty freaking cool if i may say so myself i've tried a lot of different spiritual paths and this is the one for me i finally found my jam <laughs> it's good to sample things out because then you know and and to maybe not find the thing initially because then when you find the thing when you find your thing it's like oh my gosh this is what i've been looking for and thank heavens that i finally found it and that it found me because I'm ready <laughs> all right friends we're gonna do the invocation now before I talk anymore so hmm, close your eyes and take some deep breaths tuning in turning your awareness inward inward inside looking within looking at the multiverse within you yes yes feeling the heart beating the breath breathing these beautiful functions that just happen for us all the time and can be anchors and reminders and soothers for us so we get a bit tossed often in the world of being human and navigating this sometimes confusing sometimes maze like material world in which we live mm. The light of Reiki fills the space around you. As you breathe in, the light of Reiki flows in on your breath and fills your body. You receive the light, and the light within you wakes up and is revealed to you. This is the light of your life force, your spirit. There are archangels standing at the corners of the land, and on every side, standing all around you and they shine their light into the light as you breathe in the power of love fills your breath and you receive the power of love and the power of love within you wakes up and is revealed to you you remember love is who you are at the core of your being. Hmm. The light of the divine mind fills your breath and as you breathe in you receive the power of the divine mind and the divine mind within you wakes up. Your higher consciousness, your higher thought is present and the field of possibilities is open. Your intuition, instincts, and imagination are awake. Your inner guidance, your inner truth, 
your inner authority are revealed to you. Your heightened perceptions, senses, instincts, and observations are awake and present and revealed to you. The light of the divine heart fills your breath, and as you breathe in, you receive the power of the divine heart, and the divine heart within you wakes up, and your heart light is revealed. Your heart light shines out in front of you, on each side, above you, below you, within you. This is your divine presence. And as you see your divine presence, you see it in everything and everyone around you. The light of the earth rises through you and fills your body and your breath. And you remember that your body is made of the earth. Your body gives your life force, your spirit, breath, and life. Your body is the treasure house for your great beaming light. Your pure human spirit is revealed. The light of creation, the light of God, fills the air you breathe and flows in and reveals the light of creation, the light of God in you. Your divine spirit is revealed. Your divine spirit and your human spirit unify in your breath. When you listen, you can hear the heartbeat of the earth and the heartbeat of creation beating in the same rhythm as your heart. The light of creation and the light of your body are one light within you. Your divine nature is present in your human nature. You remember your beautiful spirit, your life force is here in your life in this moment in time. Look into your heart and say thank you to you. Take this time to notice how deeply you love, how deeply you care. We say thank you to each other. We are meant to be here together today. We say thank you to the angels and the enlightened ones who join us the illumined beings, the ascended masters, the guides, all of them. We say thank you to the teachers who come before us, the brothers and the sisters in the light, and the descendants who come after us. We are honored to be among them, humbled to be among them. Aho, amen, namaste, and so it is. Thank you, mahalo, gracias. As a child of God, I claim my power and purpose as a servant of God. I demand that all darkness leave me and all who are present immediately. Into the light be healed. Into the light be healed. Into the light be healed. I ask that Archangel Michael place me and all who are present in his blue bubble of protection against all darkness. Into the light be healed. Into the light be healed. Into the light be healed. Y'all can come back whenever you're ready. Just taking a couple notes. If y'all have any questions, you could ask them now. Yes, we do have one. DM Christy the link and check them. What part of the world is this? Thoughts on the sun as giver of energy and life since Reiki is healing energy. A meditative journey welcome as always beautiful vibes beautiful questions um, 
what part of the world is this? Do you mean, um, where am I? <laughs> I'm in Costa Rica, physically. Um, what part of the world are we working with? You know, Reiki works with the physical world, the material world, and this world is, is physical. Um, it's also dual, meaning we have love and fear here, love and hate, you know, these polarities, light and dark, black and white, yes and no, up and down, man and woman, masculine, feminine, that kind of thing. So we have duality here. Um, and that's something to work with. It's not good or bad. It's just it is what it is and it informs You know the level of consciousness that is available and predominant here um, That fortunately Reiki is very high high consciousness and really helps the navigating of the dual realm and at least according to my guidance the earth is on a trajectory to actually ascend physically <laughs> that's one way you could you could see it um you know this transition from more 3d 4d uh lower density to higher density to more of a 5d situation is actually you know represented by the earth staying a physical realm but becoming non-dual and becoming a realm where no there's not like love and fear anymore there's just love um there's not light and dark anymore there's just light there's not masculine and feminine anymore there's just perfect balance uh, that's that's where this world is headed and will be and all the light workers right now, um, more and more of us are coming forward and feeling empowered to go ahead and facilitate that. Um, because I know this is, I felt this myself very powerfully, but a lot of other people I'm interacting with are sharing similar things where there's this real sense of urgency um, to go ahead and step, step up now. And I think that's because each of us is required to step up in our unique ways so that we go ahead and, and bring about <laughs> this, this non-dual earth, this realm where it's love, it's light, it's physical. It really is heaven on earth. Earth's like, yeah, that's what I got going for y'all. That's what's on offer. Like y'all dragging your feet, humans, like giving me a bad reputation across the universe but really you know a few years from now earth is gonna be like where it's at in the universe <laughs> right now everybody thinking like earth is not where it's at earth is you know crap planet but really earth is like you know just wait just wait friends like i'm about to be where the party is and yeah, so we're all we're all a part of that and and Reiki really facilitates and that empowerment and that stepping into your purpose, you know, figuring out what is the purpose um, and how to step into it and like supporting that that journey and the healing required so that you figure out your purpose and can step into it and the ongoing healing too across time and space it's very thorough and comprehensive so hopefully that's kind of what you're talking about with what part of the world is this thoughts on the sun as giver of energy sun is is definitely a giver of energy for sure and we learn a lot about energy in contemplating the sun and the earth's relationship to the sun um, you know, there are, I was just at a place where someone, someone's tradition was actually like very much, um, like sun, I don't want to say sun worshiping, but like, uh, like sun gazing and definitely harnessing a lot of energy from the sun. And, um, there are specific 
beings that work with that energy I think these are probably ET beings from my experience with human connections that date back into Egyptian times and other times because I mean you look at any ancient culture or civilization there are a lot of different cultures and civilizations that really like worship the Sun had a lot of respect for the Sun worked with Sun energy um, so there are definitely traditions like that and um, I can definitely say that Reiki something different <laughs> that's for sure and I can say that Reiki is I don't know the level of consciousness of the Sun this would be a great question actually to um, activate Reiki and reflect upon is what's the level of consciousness of, with the Sun that's honestly just not an inquiry that I've really sat with I have sat a lot more with and invited the questioning into like what's what's Earth's level of consciousness and like what what is like earth mother energy and what does she want and what's her personality and like her 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 deal um, so I've spent a lot more time getting getting to know her um, but yeah I mean I think that that's a beautiful uh, source of energy and also a question to contemplate and also like what's the level of consciousness of the beings associated with the sun because um, many people perceive certain beings as again being associated with the sun um, I don't know their level of consciousness it's my understanding and my experience that they're very powerful for sure um, but I don't know, yeah, the level of consciousness and whether it's like non-dual or what the deal is. Um, yeah, so sun is energy and life. Giver of energy. The sun as giver of energy and life. Um, you know, I mean, you could look at the sun as the giver of maybe the human bodies like some of the materials of the human body's life source but I don't I don't see the Sun as um, the source of like the breath of life necessarily so a meditative journey says Ra in ancient Egypt yes Surya yes Surya in Hinduism I learned that in my yoga training um, let me see if I can do this now. No, it's like, you know this one? I think it's this one. It's the, or maybe it's like this. There's a sun mantra and a sun um, mudra, rather. Yeah, like this. And then you sun gaze and you look through the, that little hole. You hold your hands up like this and you're looking through the little hole. And you see the hole in my hands? Y'all are probably like, what the heck is she doing? Um, and you do your sun gazing like that because sun gazing is actually healthy a lot of people are like oh my god looking at the sun it's gonna burn your eyes and it can but there's a safe way to do sun gazing so yeah there's a whole a whole um, tradition of sun yeah Buddha was also non, known as kinsman of the sun powerful energy certainly powerful energy certainly um, something to be worked with and I'd say trust your inner guidance on that one you know um, with any of this stuff trust your inner guidance if you're feeling guided to work with the Sun and and contemplate Sun energy and yeah just just work with that energy then I would say definitely follow it but but having having some questions some some discernment with it right like is this leading me to love or fear is this expanding my capacity to love you know what is sitting with that question what is the level of consciousness of the Sun what is the level of consciousness 
of any kind of beings you might interact with who are associated with the sun. I mean, this goes for any any tradition you might you know start looking into. Also, is these are great questions. These are questions that my teacher, my Reiki master teacher, Colleen Benelli, um, she has a shamanic background, and she really emphasizes asking them because. There's a lot of power everywhere, okay? There's a lot of there's a lot of power. There's a lot of power. There's a lot of energy. Everything's energy. All right. That's that's number one. Everything's energy. And also there are a bunch of different when you when you get on board with the spiritual path, um, you know, it, there are a bunch of different places you can get power. And um you know, just because it's a powerful tradition or a powerful method doesn't necessarily mean it's going to lead to more love, you know. Um, sometimes it, it can, but, but having kind of that discernment piece, does it lead to more love, does it lead to fear, is, is really, really important because, you know, on a spiritual journey, as you become more powerful and step more fully into your power, you know, Spider-Man quote, right? With great power comes great responsibility. It's so, so true. And to really know if you're working with a specific kind of energy or a specific being, what is, what's their agenda? You know, what's their level of consciousness? You know, is it unlimited energy or is it finite? Um, is it draining you in any way? Is it, you know, how is it manifesting in your life too? So having some awareness practices around this, you know, having, having a freaking, you know, old school, right, journal and journaling your, your awareness as it unfolds. Like how, how is it, how is my life um, unfolding? How are my thoughts unfolding? How are my ideas unfolding? How are my actions unfolding as I start really working with this energy, noticing um, you know, if it's a good fit for you ultimately or not, and if it's having like a, a positive, productive impact in your life, or if maybe it's taking something away too, because that's a big thing too in, in any kind of energy healing. So where I was just at on my retreat, I had the opportunity to work with a couple different energy healers and I actually opted not to because, um, because it was a personal choice, I just felt like I didn't need to. Like I, I can give myself all the energy work that I possibly can take and some. <laughs> but um, what really, you know, with someone, if I hear that someone is an energy worker and they give sessions, right? And after a certain number of sessions, they just, they just can't do anymore you know they feel drained and like they've had enough then that to me indicates that that energy worker is using some of their own energy to facilitate the healings and while that energy worker could have just amazing healing energy really really amazing good heart pure intentions like on point on point healer it's coming from a finite finite resources you know it's it's not it's ultimately like limited okay because this person like clearly can't just like keep doing it I'm not saying like for a good energy worker they should like never have to stop ever ever because of course like any energy worker is still going to be human um, but I think the most effective energy healers are in my experience and in my humble opinion are those who are truly working with infinite energy and are you know taking the ego taking the personal limited um, energy out of the equation because okay I used to do this all the time like I've been an empath healer personality since I came out of the womb but until I got Reiki I was I was holding space for others and I was using my limited resources. I was using my personal energy as the source of of the healing and space holding and and also having just not such good 
boundaries and people still would feel like you know amazing calm energy from me and just always feeling better around me feeling supported all of this but okay so I was like giving it all away and then for myself it was it was manifesting I was having issues I was having I was needing like addictions to like to medicate I was taking on a lot of um the other people's stuff who I was trying to help and that was that was not ultimately for my highest good but a real switch happened for me when I finally got the Reiki energy I was tapped in I was attuned to um, this infinite source of energy that not only when a Reiki attuned person gives a Reiki session to someone else that other person receives beautiful Reiki healing energy, but actually the practitioner receives the energy at the same time, okay? So a lot of times when I do a distance session, I, I just use my body as if it's the person's body. And I, this is something I actually wanted to talk about today. Um, I open up the healing. I include myself. Every time I do a spirit release for a client or someone else, every time I do a healing experience for a client, anytime I do a intrusion removal and healing, like extraction, shamanic extraction techniques for someone else, um, I also include myself actively. And, and I'm like, you know, in kind of the prayers and stuff I'm saying, I'm like, you know, for, you know, Darla, as well as any spirits that are on Taylor, as well as any other unhealthy spirits that have attached to anyone who can be positively impacted by this healing. I really, I open it up as big as it can, can possibly go, um, because by universal laws because there might be you know it's not like everybody in the world will receive that healing because not everybody wants to like but it, it does tend to ripple out further when i consciously open it up that way so getting reiki for me was a big shift like i said um you know i immediately after my reiki too started going to holistic fairs and all day I would do Reiki sessions, all day, back to back to back, seeing, you know, 10, 20, 30 people, like, in a row, no breaks, I often wouldn't even bring food, like, I'd have water, um, and, and it was no problem, at the end of the day, I felt high as a kite, <laughs> I felt, I was like, I was like, am I good to drive home? I just, you know, I feel like blasted right now. Like if any of y'all, you know, like having a yoga high after a yoga class is kind of like that, but like even better, you know, after like a really hard yoga class and then you have a shavasana and it's just like the cleanest high ever. Um, that's, that's like kind of in the realm of what a Reiki high feels like, but it's, it's really good. I, I would feel so relaxed after those days of just going, going, going. And again, you know, I kind of experimented with this um, yesterday. I'd had a lot of calls, a lot of sessions, a lot of stuff. And I still, I came on here and I did a Reiki live. You know, I was like, I should probably just go to sleep. But I was like, actually you know I'm probably good to just do this live and I felt amazing and like the energy is just there um, because it's truly you know I'm tapping into something that is infinite that is abundant that is empowering and it's a completely different game changer from from our our basic you know modus operandi like way of operating from our own limited energy and resources and within the confines of 
yeah, like the finite, the the human personality. What are you know Taylor's like skills and and resources? You know, bullet points and like okay, do these things. It it just like it opens up completely. Like yeah, you get you got all those skills that you know are on the bullet points, but they're even better. Okay, they're like amplified. You're aware of even more that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Um, new creative solutions and problem solving strategies emerge and then you're also blessed with all the past lifetimes of mastery backwards and forwards across time and space if needed and the and the muscle of um, the infinite limitless energy and pretty much you know the ability to to do whatever is needed in in any situation as long as it aligns with universal laws which in reiki's case include respecting free will and doing no harm and always operating for the highest good of the person who's calling it in as well as for the highest good of others as well as for the highest good of the world so if any given wish or request or healing or blessing or anything that let's say I'm asking Reiki to do, if it's gonna mess something up karmically, if it's gonna you know empower some kind of shift that like is not ultimately good on one of those levels in my life, in the lives of others, and in in the existence of the world, then it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna take place. Like Reiki will like edit that out. It's conscious life force energy again this is the difference when you're working with a conscious life force energy i love reiki because like you can't mess it up you can't mess it up okay it's foolproof i was having a conversation with jesus not too long ago it was like um almost a week ago and he was like yeah taylor we made this system foolproof <laughs> We knew we had to make a system for y'all and give you, like, like spoon feed you this humans, like sweet humans. He wasn't saying it in like a judgy, pretentious way. He was just like, we, yeah, like, he's all humble, like funny, funny dude, like, you know, so compassionate and spacious, just like, yeah, Taylor, we made it, we made it foolproof. We made it so that humans you know can't mess it up even if they kind of do something a little bit wrong like the energy has got you covered you know and it was also funny he was like um i was like kind of going off about oh it's so good jesus you know like the reiki it's wonderful like thank you thank you such a gift such a gift like wow blessing and he was like well yeah like it's you know one of the the spiritual path like it like we can't really make it so that it gives any positive immediate results any more positive or immediate than this but like it's as positive and immediate as we can possibly give you within the confines of universal law and like you know dealing with the the human organism and what you know like limitations and densities and and things um not even limitations so much but just like how things work parameters parameters really respecting the parameters it was like yeah this is this is pretty much as good as we can get for now and um yeah it's about as as, as fast as easy as um overwhelmingly positive a thing as as we can pass off here to you guys to you uh humans on planet earth i was just cracking up i was like jesus like you just laid it down like that is so true that's so true so funny but it really is it's like they they made it a, a perfect system, you know, uh, to the point where, like, us, us beautiful humans with, with our flaws and character defects, like, as long as we use it and, like, keep following our, our hearts and how we use it, it even, even if, like, I were to use Reiki with malintent, you know, let's say I'm like, I want to become the most powerful sorceress in the universe 
Reiki wouldn't do it. Like, Reiki would be like, um, no. <laughs> you know, right? Like, Reiki would be like, uh, we're going to pass. We're going to pass on that one. A meditative journey says, so sounds like a thought I had about karma. It's like gravity, universal law. Yeah, that's something I'm going to be reflecting on. Uh, someone brought something I said yesterday brought that to my attention. Um, but yes, karmic karmic laws, and I think really looking at um, at balance, like the the energy works in balance. Like there's always that um, it has to be connecting in in a balanced way and that's I see karma as being like a a balancing force um but but I think karma is like a a, a dual realm like safeguard safety check kind of thing I'm really curious about how karma works in a non-dual realm I'm guessing that karma wouldn't be a part of it because no one would be creating like the beings who were existing in a non-dual realm would not be creating like additional negative karma that's a big thing about reiki too what i've noticed is that um, you know, if you're on a Buddhist path, if you're on a meditation path, probably if you're on a Hindu path, yogi path, if you've been thinking about karma, right, um, then you know, like, humans, awareness practices really help you stop creating additional negative karma, because, like, come on, right, it's one thing to clear old karma, but if you you just continuously keep thinking low vibe thoughts saying low vibe things unkind words feeling lower vibration emotions acting out of those <laughs> lower vibrations and like hurting other people then you know you're continuously creating negative karma so you know no matter how much merit you might gather that might be clearing out some past karma um, you know these awareness practices help us like drop in be aware of our thoughts be like oh that's you know that's a negative thought okay like that's a negative emotion okay and I found that really helpful with meditation however Reiki next leveled it for me y'all it next leveled it it's like I started having more empowerment around when I started noticing the negative thoughts to not go down that path and I it just it became easier to be aware and then what I saw happen was it just start started like lifting away from my consciousness like the negative thought forms um just like don't happen as much the frequency um reduced of those uh you know i don't have the looping negative thoughts anymore um as well as you know unkind words that kind of thing like behaving inauthentically anything that might be creating additional negative karma um yeah coming into awareness really quickly and also like um making a different choice okay and empowering like a new trajectory i see reiki as a really really positive tool especially on the level of mind because mind is so challenging right like let's say you're on an awareness path you know you become aware of um, you know, you need to start speaking more kindly to yourself, to others. You need to start acting more kindly to yourself and others. Okay, like that's doable. But what about the mind that seems like it's, you know, pretty much, you know, a little out of control, right, at times. And, you know, might have a lot of, of negative thought forms, especially on earth right now where yeah they're they're flying through like they're they're everywhere they're very very available um 
Reiki for me has, I mean, it's a literal attunement to an energy. So like, I'm not tuning into all that plethora of negative thought forms that are being circulated in the the ethers, okay, and all over the earth that are, you know, they're literally being broadcast. I'm attuned to Reiki, so Reiki will literally, like, it tunes me in to these higher vibrations, these higher thought forms, um, you know, the, the power of love, the light of the divine heart, the light of the divine mind, and especially that um, mental emotional symbol is so powerful for really healing the mind and I think I think it's a really powerful karmic um, karmic symbol and karmic healer I think that one especially paired with the distant symbol um, because that one it lets you go all across time and space anywhere that's needed and it's a bridge of light also to other other realms and it does so much more oh my gosh it does a whole heck of a lot um, but yeah and all of those symbols I just mentioned are taught in Reiki 2 training which I'm teaching teaching in May um, I wanted to share also a little bit about something that came to me today um, so I have another I have an email list where I've been sharing my flower of healing for earth angels talking about the five petals it's like five different aspects to a holistic lifestyle and I've shared about the raw vegan diet like diet being you know one petal and then mindful movement and then spiritual practice and then detoxification and cleansing and then the last petal is nature and the elements and um, I've released videos on all all the first four but not yet on the fifth one and those of you on my list are probably like yeah girl where you been well I've been in Costa Rica I've been doing stuff okay but it's all related so that fifth video I was I was reflecting today on the fifth petal and like writing some notes down to create a video that's trying not to make it be five hours long because lord knows I have so much to say about nature and the elements that's really the challenge with these videos is just to like kind of keep them to a minimum um you know a digestible amount of information like what actually needs to come across so I was reflecting on the elements earlier today I was at this vegan co-working cafe a really cool a uh, little spot here in, in Costa Rica, Puerto Viejo, um, and uh, actually, so I was at that that co-working space, and then I was riding my bike back to my Airbnb, and I was like, oh my god, the symbols are connected to the elements, ah! like that, that realization came to me again, it's, it's one that like I've had before, but like, it was just like, it really sank in, and um, so there's the power symbol which is associated with the air element as well as the heart chakra this is the one um, that in the invocation I say is the power of love the power of love is is basically an air symbol and it's associated with the heart um, the mental emotional symbol okay no surprise there that one's associated with water as well as the sacral chakra because that's where a lot of our emotions and trauma often is stored in that sacral area and that's i mean in women it's a womb so it's like it's really a storage organ it's like an empty space that yeah like stores all this stuff um it's a water bath right um so to actually be able and to clear it out and heal it with that mental emotional I feel like that symbol is really important for everybody right now but definitely for for women um, okay because we have so much space there to store trauma we have so much space there also to like create children and birth like huge ideas information programs all the creative things all art all of it that womb is magic 
sauce, okay? If you are a lady, like, give your womb some love because that is a bun in the oven, okay? Like, that, that thing, it creates babies and it holds space for big ideas and it's so needed right now. It's so needed us to have, like, clean, clear, bright, beautiful, alive, empowered wombs. So that mental emotional symbol is water and sacral. And then the distance symbol is ether. It's like you're, you're going across time and space. This is one where I'm doing spirit releases at a distance. I'm working with that. I'm doing Reiki at a distance. We're working with that. Um, it's what allows this to happen so well. Um, it's also that symbol in particular, I think, is really, really helpful for embedding the Reiki frequency within the EMF of the earth so that any kind of effects from the, you know, this G and other things like, you know, being hooked up to the internet all over the place and like having these high levels of radiation, I think that distant symbol through the ether element really helps mitigate and and not even just mitigate the impact of all that the radiation and the EMF but like turn it into like oh it's healing frequencies like it's good it's, it's good vibes it's gonna you're gonna get healed through the power of the internet okay can alchemize it just like that I know y'all this time last year I was stressing out about this G as well as um yeah f having headaches and all this stuff so like i've had a total 180 on this and um it's it's got me more stoked about sharing reiki in all forms online as much as possible so that i can embed i can be a part of because other people are doing this too embedding the reiki energy and the reiki frequency into the emf of the earth into the emf of humanity in in mitigate not just mitigating but alchemizing the effects of all this radiation and emf into like let's use it that's what the master alchemist does takes a problem turns it into a solution that's what they do in permaculture even they you know it's like alchemizing take a problem you got a pest okay how are we going to create a solution here how are we going to work with this okay earth it's a big permaculture situation it's an energetic permaculture situation all right we got to be doing sustainable stuff long term in all in all levels of existence so distant symbol is ether then we got the Yusui master symbol, and this one to me is joining ether and earth. It's, bring, it's bringing together spirit and human body, which is made of the earth. And that, that y'all, powerful, powerful. We're talking like divine embodiment, divine presence, merging your human spirit and human nature with your divine spirit and divine nature um just as regular old you and me like we're not talking about needing to be a prophet or needing to be like a channel of some you know enlightened being or something no it's like ether and earth coming together in your unique authentic self really beautiful really good reason to take a master training okay like if you're drawn to it often people take reiki one and two and they don't take master and it's fine because they don't want to be a reiki master again great power comes great responsibility like if your guidance guides you to take a master class do it but also like understand if you're not guided to do that that's okay too but like there are huge gifts there <laughs> If you want them, but like you open, you open new can of worms, but those worms, they're, they're freaking awesome, all right? They're really, really awesome, but there's no going back. I wouldn't want to go back though, like, oh my God, I'm like, gracias, I made it this far, like it's been a miracle, it's been a miracle all in divine timing. So then also in a master training within the Yusui Holy Fire tradition, you also get a Holy Fire symbol. And y'all, this stuff is the stuff, okay? 
all of it's the stuff all right all of it's great the holy fire though is really pretty epic um, that of course no-brainer that's associated with the fire element and it's like y'all it's good fire <laughs> it's Moses and the burning bush fire it is some some fiery fire of the fieriest fire there possibly is on fire like I feel like I'm on fire all the time and I'm like yeah I'm on holy fire I'm on fire I'm on fire I'm on holy fire I can't get enough of the fire <laughs> it's actually increased my body temperature over time too and like I normally run cold and I'm like blessed be like finally I have like a good metabolism and some heat in me this is really really nice um, you know, being like a lean person and like being able to maintain a decent body temp, this is very good and have a good metabolism and a, you know, healthy thyroid and all my hormones working. So the Holy Fire has some very practical, um, you know, manifestations as I was just sharing, but it also, I mean, it burns whatever you need to let go of. Like it, it not only like burns it up but it, it sends it into the light to be healed again like karmically it takes care of business you know it does the due diligence it's thorough it's comprehensive it's not leaving anything undone um and then i've also channeled an additional three symbols which y'all like that's a whole other story um i've talked about it in in that email list I was sharing about my best kept secrets of radiant health and spiritual awakening the flower of healing that is a symbol I channeled it looks like a flower but it's really cool and then there are two others um, and those symbols are actually combinations of all the elements and yeah, I've been guided recently that I need to share them in art and I need to get them out to the world like ASAP. I will also most likely create a specific training for them um, because they came out of my work with the Yusui symbols, but also for me to teach them in a Yusui Holy Fire class is, is probably not appropriate. So I... I'm going to continue to feel into them, but they are, they are absolute gifts, these, these three symbols that I've been given, and they're definitely, they weren't, they weren't given to me, oh, Taylor, like, you're special, they're like, no, you're receptive, and the world freaking needs these frequencies right now. So I am going to be, I, as soon as I get back to Hawaii, I wish I could do art right now. Like, I can't, I can't really put it together. Like, I'm traveling. It's only carry-ons. Like, it's not appropriate for me to be doing art right now. But when I get back to Hawaii, y'all bet your bottom dollar I'm going to be, um, <coughs> me and the cliches right now. <gasps> um, I'm going to be creating art, I'm going to be painting, I'm going to be getting these symbols out to the world. Um, they're not like the, the other Reiki symbols where they need to be kept secret. It's been made clear to me these can be shared as art. In fact, they need to be shared as art because a lot, not everybody who needs these symbols, like everybody needs these symbols. Not everyone's going to take the training, but these symbols could go out really far and, and wide as, you know, screensavers and... Um, stickers on the water to turn the water into magic water and like all all over the place right so like on your technology on the screens as well as like you know I'll have offerings that are like physical um, paintings as well uh, but yeah pretty much in all the ways and I'm sure I'll, I'll be needing to collaborate with people who know how to do things like you know turn everything into gorgeous stickers and screensavers and all of these all of these things so I'll be assembling parts of my team but yeah I've definitely been guided to uh, share these these symbols because they are so they're so potent right now and y'all they change everything they change everything you know I can't like symbols are one of these things that like not enough people appreciate and it's just like one of these 
these secrets that's just like right in front of us and it's like right out in the open and because maybe it's so out in the open and apparent we don't really like recognize the power of them but I mean certain people have talked about them like homeboy Carl Jung talking about the psychologist a student of Freud Carl Jung was really big on symbols I believe um, was it Joseph Campbell too in the hero's journey talking about symbols certain figures have tapped in and of course been relegated to oh he's just a mystic or he's a pseudoscientist it's like nah these guys like the people who've been you know appreciating the power of symbols are just tapped in and and speaking the freaking truth as they perceive it and i think you know like having the courage to speak each of our truths that is that is a beautiful thing and you know if you get nothing out of these lives other than like empowerment to discover what your truth is and to express it compassionately in some form you know if you get that out of this then you know I've I've done something right here you know I've, I've definitely done at least something right that's Reiki that's not Taylor you know Taylor Taylor just shows up and Reiki flows and and we do something here we do a little we do a little Reiki dance together yeah but yeah I appreciate that um another thing that came through actually because I've been riding a bike here all over the place is that the power symbol that you get in Reiki too some of you athletes are gonna really like that one because talk about something that you can use for endurance sports the power symbol especially cyclists because it's a spiral i'm not going to tell you more than that but but the power symbol for athletics for endurance for stamina for um yeah for for all of those things I think is is definitely wonderful if you're an athlete using that power symbol you know, you wouldn't think like oh like I'm an athlete I need Reiki but like if you get Reiki oh my god the athletes who have Reiki oh my god it's almost like they should be disqualified <laughs> they should be disqualified like they're on steroids or something it's like no nah, I'm on Reiki I'm on Reiki and I'm vegan. Oh, shoot. You just need to go home. Like, <laughs> nobody's got a chance. A meditative journey says, Every raindrop brings blessings to nature. There can be devotion and gratitude towards even a blade of grass. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And each of us are those blades of grass that are beautiful and we're each doing our part and every single blade of grass is absolutely beautiful and absolutely necessary right now or else it wouldn't exist. That's what I have to say about that. So, friends, if you're getting anything out of these lives, pay it forward um share this in your stories and your social media with a friend or family member anybody who may be interested who you think may benefit from what's being shared here and also if you're if you're feeling it if you're curious you know if you're just curious even i encourage you sign up for the reiki training give it a shot what do you have to lose oh you know unhealthy behaviors like unhealthy thought forms unhealthy habits okay reiki will help you do that all right there's a lot to be gained and and there's nothing you know if you have a pure heart a pure mind of curiosity that really is all that's required and I will be offering that online in May. It will be a healing event. It will be an empowering event. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. And I'm really excited for it. And I know everybody who's already signed up is excited. And the new friends who will be signing up, y'all should be excited too. So the link to that is my bio. I will make sure I have the correct link in my bio as well as the link in my YouTube video description. And I will make sure that is also the correct link. So I appreciate each of y'all being a part of this exchange this sacred container online and we'll be back again tomorrow for day number 36 much love to y'all not much love 
I realized I close my emails like that infinite love because I'm not I'm not throwing down much love I'm throwing down infinite love all right all right this is infinite love right now namaste the light in me sees honors and acknowledges the light in you and the light that you are shine on shine on Mwah! shine on